Hello, everyone. Welcome to the ninth episode of the Griefer Hour podcast, which also happens to be our Christmas special. Vic, how are you feeling this time of year? Oh, just merry and bright as always, Alex. I've got my uh, little Hawaiian Christmas shirt on here. I'm good. Well, I'm not as festive as you are, but I've been enjoying the Christmas spirit with all the snow blowing I've been doing. I bet you are. Actually, uh, I just drove home from work here and it's starting to come down again out here. Not much, but enough to make the drive home suck. Did you anything fun this weekend? I did. Actually, my girlfriend graduated college this weekend. So we had her little commencement this past Saturday. It was a lot of fun. Spent time with her and her family a little bit on Saturday and then just had a little us time on Sunday. It was really fun. What about you? Well, I also hung out with my girlfriend. I slept over at her house for the weekend and played Risk, like the board game Risk. I haven't and done that Clue. in a while. That takes forever. It does take forever. It's um, it's a marathon. That's oh, for that's sure. That's like a whole day. Yes. Sometimes too. A, I've I've had some pretty long games. Yeah. One could it, say I need chapters slog. for my games. Like you can like find down below for the video, Alex. Right. That's right, down in the scroller below, you can find chapters for each topic that we will talk about in today's podcast. Better way to kick our podcast off, Alex, with some of our hashtag quick chats from last week. And uh, I know this is says it's from Drizo, but I believe it's from Drizo's son, he said in the comments? I believe so, yes. Oh, what is better, fettuccine alfredo or spaghetti? I want you to field this one first, and I'll give my opinion here. Right here. Um, here, here's my problem. I believe fettuccine is is not really due to the Alfredo. It is a it is a cut of pasta. If I'm not wrong. And then spaghetti is more the long stringy, and fettuccine is it, it's long strings, but I think it's thicker. I, as far as spaghetti goes, I don't know if that's just standard red sauce with the with the strings or whatnot. We'll maybe we'll have to get some clarification next week. But personally, you know. I don't hate a red sauce, but you know, man, Alfredo just hits different some days, you know? Especially with like some nice seasoned chicken mixed in there. Maybe you get kind of a carbonara going with the fettuccine, with the Alfredo, you know? Ooh. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm leaning towards fettuccine Alfredo to, to answer your question, but I, I believe fettuccine is more of a cut. And, you know, a cut preference, you know? Well, I think the, the Alfredo part is to clarify it's either fettuccine. Like Alfredo with fettuccine noodles or like spaghetti, typical spaghetti with marinara, like red sauce and spaghetti noodles. I think that was the comparison. Yeah, and that's kind of where I'm taking it. I think I'm going to go Alfredo. What about you? You know what? I I like fettuccine Alfredo, but I don't know. Something about fettuccine Alfredo is really filling for me. And I feel like I can down more spaghetti in one sitting than I can Alfredo. Like I'll get sick of the Alfredo. I just, and maybe I'm a little, I'm a little biased on this, but you know, just eating pasta on a Thursday night before a football game on Friday and just, you know, carbo loading, dude, I, fettuccine Alfredo just all the way, man. Well, I think your pick is kind of cap. And speaking of cap, our next quick chat is from baby drew studios who asks us, should MLB have a salary cap and a salary minimum? I know you're really big into baseball. A little bit. And I, I have some strong opinions on this one, too. So I want to hear what you think about this whole salary cap issue with Major League Baseball. Well, the the hard part is is bringing in the money. Baseball's always been very dependent on being a decent team and spending your money uh, as best you can based off of what you what you can pull in. So salary cap might help even out teams. I, it's just it's hard to determine how to break that up. I, I know there's been some really big talks of it. I I would not hate a salary cap. I think it'd be very fair. You see, it works pretty well in the NFL, and you get a lot more movement uh, with players. With you know, you can't just offer them you know, uh, let's say around like nine years, three hundred and sixty million dollars, for example, just to stay. Yeah. Um, well, I I think a salary cap would definitely help level the playing field a little bit more because yeah, it's not like fair. the people that come in the door that pay these players. It's the oh, yeah. TV deals that they get. Yep. Like exactly. the Dodgers TV deal is ridiculous. Like stupid money. 
And an example I think that Baby Drew said in the comments was like the the I don't know if it was the Yankees or Dodgers have already spent like five hundred million in the offseason yep. compared to like the Orioles who spent ten million. So you see a huge discrepancy between teams. So I think cap would help with that. And then a salary minimum. I don't know how the percentages work. I know like in football, I think yeah, the minimum like is like seven hundred and fifty thousand or something. I think like, a vet min is fair. You know, like anywhere from five hundred to seven fifty is I think fair for like a vet min. And I think that's typically what they try to honor for the most part. I don't I don't think it's uh much of a rule rule. I believe mm-hmm. it's more of just like a gentleman's agreement, which is, you know, I think that's understandable. And speaking of gentlemen, Vic Yes, of course. Drizo asks about our thoughts on Michael Vick and asking if he's the best scramble quarterback of all time. Well, the best part about Vick is that he could also still throw the ball. No offense to Lamar Jackson. <clears throat> I knew that was coming, by the way. <laughs> I knew that you'd find a way to throw Lamar Jackson to the side and you know, like a little stray there for Lamar. But Lamar has done very well when it comes to scrambling. I just feel he he relies on it too often. Whereas, you know, Vic still threw for like, you know, 4,000 plus yards a season and still had a decent scramble average. Vic is it is he the really best? did a well due to his speed, I feel. Okay. And so does Lamar. Lamar does great rushing the ball. He really does. I just, I wish I could see him throw it more confidently. I feel like I've seen him grow from year to year, but really this year like that, that run first mentality has really come back. And you see that with him injuring his knee in back-to-back seasons now. And, you know, the Ravens not getting him any solid weapons at wide receiver. So they don't get open and he's forced to rush. And I feel, and, and that's a little bit for me not to entirely dog Lamar Jackson that hard. But, you know, you ain't got that dog in him like Michael Vick do. My, my, <laughs> I, th- I think you can say that. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> um, anyway. As far um, as scrambling quarterbacks go, it's hard to determine where a lot of quarterbacks fall on that. Because there are some quarterbacks who run a decent amount. Like, look at Jalen Hurts. Um, he had three rushing touchdowns this past week. And yeah. was or, like, even to... Kyler Murray is yep. good at extending plays, I know, whether I mean, he's rushing or if he's just evading tackles nonstop. And Russell Wilson before he fell off a cliff was decent at extending plays too. Yeah. Uh, look at Patrick Mahomes. He's very athletic. Um as far as uh, scramble QB goes, I believe we have to take it as going from line of scrimmage, you know, towards the end zone. Like they're getting straight rushing yards. And I feel Michael Vick is slightly better than Lamar Jackson at scrambling. I think that's fair. I would agree. Um, the thing about Michael Vick is that he actually had a bag outside of running. So that's uh, He's not a one for pony. Right, exactly. That kind of wraps it up. Yeah. yeah, I think wraps up our quick chats. Thank you all for adding those hashtag quick chats in the comments below. Please keep giving us more and more every week. Anything. Ask us anything. Ask us our favorite color. Ask us anything about sports or gaming or, you know, I, I honestly, at this point, I'll take technology, Alex. Honestly, what is two plus two? We will help you with your math homework. Granted, you know, it might not help you in time, but we'll try our best. But I think we're going to move over to basketball now. Love to shuffle over there. So first tidbit today, uh, Draymond Green, you know, being typical Draymond. He gets a Bucks fan ejected for allegedly threatening his life. That's what he said. And it turns out this didn't even happen. The fan didn't even say that to him. So the Bucks gave him a refund, tickets to upcoming games. And my question is, is Draymond the biggest crybaby dumbass in the NBA? Uh, Maybe that's not the right word. Not dumbass. Um, complainer? Complainer. Yeah. Um, that's a good question. Well, let's make, let's try to make a top three list right here off the top of our heads for biggest Draymond Weiner. makes that top three easily. Right. He's on there. In no particular order, uh, I'm going to add Devin Booker and LeBron oh, yeah. James to that list. Those three. That's those, a pretty good those solid are big list. Three. 
Patrick they, Beverly? Would you put ooh. him? He's not really a complainer, though. He's just more of an aggravator. He, he more gets complained about, I feel. Actually, you know what he does, though? He aggravates other players, so they go complain to the ref, and then, like, he'll act like he didn't do anything, and he'll just walk away. So he doesn't really complain to the refs. He just instigates. It, big time. Big time instigator. That's definitely... Honestly, him and Lance Stevenson would probably be my top two for that category. Yes. But so, is one of the top... Top three, top five. Maybe, you know, um, it, you could even leave it in your hashtag quick chats, folks, to kind of relate back there for a little bit. Uh, who you think is the biggest complainer in the NBA? Um, Give it to us in our hashtag quick chats. But you know what? Well, I have a chance to see him on Christmas, Alex. The Christmas schedule for the NBA. We've got some pretty good games, some eh games. Uh, looks like we're going to start off the day with the 76ers and the Knicks kicking things off around 11, uh, followed by Lakers Mavericks at 1.30, with the Bucks Celtics at 4, big game there in Boston, by the way, that in a bit, Grizzlies Warriors at 7, right after dinner, gotta catch that one, and then later that night, Suns Nuggets, I, I'm excited for our, honestly, the back half of the schedule. I would agree, if, if I could... Well, I'm not going to say if I could only watch two, but honestly, out of all these games, there's only two that I want to watch. Okay. Obviously, one of them is Bucks and Celtics, clearly. The second one, though, I want to see the Grizzlies and Warriors. I think that would be a good game to watch. I'd choose two games. It would be the same two I choose. Suns Nuggets makes a close close case for second, but I think I'd rather jo watch John ja Morant and Steve Stephen Curry go at it. I would too, and I'm kind of sick of the Suns, and I think a lot of other fans are starting to get tired of the Suns, thinking they're all high and mighty, when they're not. And then uh, as for the other games, I mean, Knicks don't really care, Lakers and Mavericks, ugh. Lakers on a road game, the Lakers give them an L, give me Luka Doncic. Give them an L, yep. But uh, after breaking that one down so quickly, you want to break down the Bucks celtics game, Alex? Yes, we will break down this one a little bit more in depth because it is a little closer to home for the two of us. Really Celtics are taking on the Bucks at home. Uh, Celtics are currently a five-point favorite in this game with a 69% nice chance of winning the game. Uh, 538 rates this game in 94 quality, 12 importance. I assume that's because they assume both of these teams will make the playoffs regardless of what happens in this game. Pretty much. Which makes the overall score a 53, which for NBA games is pretty high because the importance of the regular season is a lot lower than NFL games. Especially as we're approaching kind of the midway point. Not really. We still, we still got a couple more games, but, you know, this is still early. I'm sure as we get closer to the end, that importance rating is going to skyrocket. But, so, Vic, uh, I want to turn it over to you. What do you think will be the key matchups going into this game for these teams? Uh, honestly, I'd like to see who they put on Giannis, because I don't think it's going to be Jason Tatum. I don't see that happening. Um, I'd be interested to see if Marcus Smart tries to cover him, or if they don't see them putting Al Horford. Robert Williams just came back a couple games ago. We'll see if he's 100-100% for this game. What about Grant? Huh? Is he Grant Williams? No, no, Robert Williams. Uh, you know, the center. Number 44. No, but... I know, but oh. where's Grant Williams? Uh, I, I see him more of a kind of a off the bench, maybe. But in the playoffs last year, he was one of Giannis's main defenders. Maybe I I can maybe see them going back to that. I don't know. I don't know how they want to change things up. You know, you know, you get pieces back. You want to move things around. Uh, you also have Blake Griffin, who's been pretty decent on the defensive side this year. Not too bad. I forget that he's on that team. Dude, he is kind of a sleeper on that team, I feel. But uh, it's been really interesting to see him play here and there. I, I'm sure he's got some left in the tank, but it, I feel like he's never been the same since he left the Clippers. Uh, I think really it's going to be watching the Bucks from three-point land and seeing how much they take advantage of that. So I know they're probably going to start with Giannis in, in the paint. But I think that's going to be a big emphasis of the Celtics to stop early on and to focus on that throughout the game and trying to force harder shots. Um, mm -hmm. That's that's typically what they do against the Bucs. Every once in a while they collapse and just get steamrolled. 
But uh, with this early in the season, and they want to keep their number one seed, I, I think they're going to stick to that, you know, defend the paint, force anything from longer outside. range, whether it's just inside or outside the arc. Well, and the thing, too, is Middleton will be back for this game. So he is. But is he going to be 100%, and will he be restricted or not, is a big thing. To allow. It could be a thing. I know that he's been playing decently since he came back, but he is still adjusting from his injury, and it's something to look for. I don't know if they're going to target him as a weakness on that team. I think they're more worried about Giannis than anyone yeah. else, for sure. And, like, Drew Holiday really isn't much of an offensive presence. Um, yeah, actually, he flashes here and there. Um, right, the he can get hot. But, uh, actually, one of the Bucks players, Javon Carter, has been just an absolute lockdown defender for their team, which is weird for a guard, because Bucks guards have not been good yeah. defensively the last few years. That's fair. Uh, I'd be interested to see if they put him on uh, Jason Tatum, actually, with him being Ooh. how good he is this season. I'd be interested. Tatum's big, though. Tatum's tall. Look Carter's at Marcus Smart. A... He's the little guy, and he got Defensive Player of the Year last year. He is scrappy. He will get up on you. No ifs, ands, or buts, man. I. It's mm. not about the size of the personality. It's about how much they're willing to try and how fearless they are, I feel, when it comes to defense in the NBA. All right, uh, you got me there. Like, at some point, yes, height is a clear – height and weight is a clear advantage, and you can push people around however much you want. But, like, if they're good at what they do and, like, they're they're willing to do it, I feel in the NBA you can look at – honestly, look at Dennis Rodman, really. Look at the yeah. – um, look at the uh, the Pistons – I believe it was the Pistons against Michael Jordan. Like, they were – I believe had the quote-unquote – I believe it was slap defense – you just fouled him as hard as you could, as I believe was the rule, whenever Michael Jordan tried to drive. Yes. If I, if I yes. remember that correctly. That was in the documentary. They talked about how they basically just beat him up physically. And that's actually why they explained in the documentary how Jordan put on weight and like went to the gym yep. and stuff just so he could get past the Pistons because they were physical and tough. And Jordan was still way too lanky the first time they met or even the second time, or however long it was before he finally got past them. Not to, not to deviate too far, because I love that documentary. I want to talk about it so much. But Yes, uh, it is a great documentary. There, there's a lot of little key things there. But back to, back to our main thing before we deviate too far. Um, I, so I think we should do kind of a prediction. We don't kind do of. score. I don't no. think we have to do a score. But That's obviously, I, I think I hard. know who you're going to pick to win this game. Um, so... And I, really? I, maybe I'll do like a like maybe a point differential here. Um, yeah. The Celtics have been kind of iffy lately, dropping random games here and there. But you know, I, it's early. Um, I I like the I don't really like the five points. I think it's going to be much closer than that. I, I think it's going to be like a two or a one point game. Um, so it's going to come down to like the final shot, basically. I think so. That, Always when these two teams play, Alex, I feel it's it's a wonderful battle of talent, no matter what. Yep. But uh, I like the Celtics by two here. Celtics by two. All right. Well, I will have to go with Milwaukee. I think that comes as no surprise. I want the Bucks to make a statement in this game saying, you guys beat us in the playoffs last year, and it was a fluke, and we are here, and we should have been in the finals last year. So I'm going to take the Bucks by six points. Lost me a fluke. But, uh... Yeah, Chris Middleton didn't play. So I don't know how you can say that was a full-strength Bucks team taking on the Celtics. And they I'm took him to seven that. games. I'm saying fluke's the wrong word. But, you know, I, I nothing else but a, a Christmas classic here, Alex, though, out of these two teams, I expect. Speaking of classics, we got a little special segment here for the holidays, guys. We're going to be going over some of our favorite Christmas classics. Um, starting with our favorite Christmas dinner food, Alex. Now, I don't know about you, but I, I might have taken this a little too far. But I wanted the main and a side dish because I felt it was too hard to choose. I am a very big Christmas ham person. You know, after having, you know, turkey on Thanksgiving, you got to switch it up. Christmas ham, or like Christmas lamb, even. 
So my favorite dinner food, I'll go with a main first. My family Christmases, it's always a tradition that we have like our German style like meatballs. And I really like those for my main dish thing. Nice. And actually I got to think about it more and I think my favorite side, and this is really random, but on my other side of the family, we always have like shrimp and cocktail sauce at our Christmas dinner. And I don't know why, but we always do. I'm gonna go with the shrimp and cocktail sauce. Not bad. You know, I, I I don't hate it. I always picture shrimp and cocktail sauce as more of like a New Year's thing, but you know. Yeah, that I Honestly, that. it's a weird week between the 25th and like the first, man. You know? It all blends together. Finger I mean, foods, everyone's traveling, you did something quick and easy. Just. I mean, you're you're sauce. physically at work, but are you actually working though? Like, are you oh, mentally working? You know, no, you're kind of checked out. And if my boss sees this video, I will be working. <laughs> I will be working between Christmas and New Year's. Little um, disclaimer there. Uh, all right. Well, hey, you know, after a meal and your side dish, what comes next? Gotta have dessert. You know, gotta have dessert. And my favorite dessert. And this is more of a treat, I guess, not really a dessert necessarily, but I personally really like those Buckeyes, which are the peanut butter balls that are dipped in chocolate. That's my favorite. Can't go wrong with those. I, and this is more of a kind of an all around dessert, but like, I, I feel like my family has it more around Christmas, but chocolate squares, you know what I'm talking about? Like fudge or chocolate squares? Like, like a Hershey's chocolate square? No, or like... no, no. I, I, maybe you've never had it. Maybe it's more of a New England thing, but uh, is a and maybe you'll know what I'm talking about. Maybe there's, there's different names for it depending on where you go. Um, it's nice graham cracker bottom, and then you have oh it, yeah, you know what I'm yes. going with. And it's and it it ranges from either chocolate pudding to like a chocolate mousse. Um, yes, and there's there's kind of a layer in between that to kind of bind the the crumbs to the pudding, and then on top of that you just cover it with Cool Whip, and you cut it up I into know. squares. And and I. I've heard it called different things here and there, but like yes. the, the one that's most consistent is chocolate squares. You cut them into squares. I know exactly what you're talking about now, and I'm hungry. I know. I, I My mom is making them this Christmas, and I'm so looking forward to them. You lucky SOB. And, you know, Alex, after all that food, I just want to sit down and watch a movie, right? That's right. Let's talk about our favorite Christmas movie. I'm gonna let you go first. Okay. So this one's a classic. Okay. It's a older-ish movie, I think from the 80s. Okay. I really like National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Nice. A lot of classic funny moments, you know, Always. the cat cap getting blown up or whatever, the, the deflated uh turkey or ham or whatever it is. Uh the you know, the giant lights on the house. Yes. All of it classic i i think that's probably my favorite christmas vacation it's, it's funny you pick that and i just want to mention this real quick actually uh one thing we do on christmas eve is we we drive around and look at christmas lights you know who doesn't like doing that there's actually a that is house, a good classic there's a house not too far down the road for me there's actually two one of them down the road for me i kid you not we literally call it the clark grizzled house based off of how many lights they have on top of and in front of their house and I don't know if it'll make this video, but I will definitely send you a picture of that if we go see it. Actually, and you can look this one up on Facebook, guys. There's actually a house not too far from me called The Nightmare Before Christmas. And he does a little uh, light music show. He's got a little projector on his uh, garage and all of his lights in his yard and house are coordinated to a, actually a radio station he owns and operates. And you can tune into the radio station and listen to it, Alex and watch with sounds, the light show. Sounds really cool. And sorry to sidetrack, but that just the, the lights on the house made me think of that. But as far as my favorite Christmas movie, and uh, it kind of ranges from like a Thanksgiving-ish movie to a Christmas movie, because that's kind of the time and place it takes place is, and mine's a little bit of an older one too, with some funny moments. Um, a Christmas story, Alex, specifically the first one. Um, classic love it you gotta love the lamp the the classic you'll shoot your eye out and the the chinese food dinner <laughs> it's it's smiling at me <laughs> yes oh <laughs> just chops it off right in front of him oh lovely oh and the uh sticking the tongue on the pole 
classic scene. <laughs> yes, of course. Well, I, I hope you guys enjoyed our Christmas classics. Thought we'd share some of those things with you. And make sure you're sharing your yours hashtag with us. quick chats. Yes, just gonna say hashtag quick chats. Share your favorite Christmas tradition, food, movie, anything. And I know we are not going to be back here for two weeks because we're gonna take a little break during the holidays, but we will read all your favorites and talk about them on the podcast. But I think it's time to move on to some football. And actually not quite the NFL yet, guys, but the biggest time of the year for the college, the football playoffs, Alex. Yes, it is time for college football playoffs where of course there's only four teams because that's how college football playoffs work for some reason. Only Absolutely. 25 teams get ranked. <laughs> we don't care about the top four. Right, so of course it's completely fair and there's no teams left out of the playoffs that should rightfully be in there. So first matchup we have is the Fiesta Bowl where number three ranked TCU takes on number two Michigan. First off, let me say I think Michigan's going to win this game. Ooh, okay. You don't agree? Oh, I'm not saying that. I just think that's interesting. I, I didn't know if you were going to be a big blue guy. I was really curious. Well, as a Badger fan, I'm kind of like mixed feelings on it. But if there's anyone out of the Big Ten who should make it, it's Michigan, right? At this point. Right. Well, and what didn't Michigan like blow out Ohio State? Wasn't and that? I believe they did. For and the, for for the championship alone, to get the two seed over the four seed. Right. And for that reason alone, blowing them out, I think Michigan is by far the best Big Ten team in this four team playoff. So. Good game. I don't know much. I of, think this is honestly. better than the other game, and we'll get to that in a minute. Um, right. What I am very excited about is just really quickly: no Alabama, no Clemson, no no LSU. Oh, beautiful. Actually, I don't mind LSU. Uh, no, like LSU when Joe Burrow was in there, is fine. That was a fun game. But, you to know, watch. with you know Clemson and Alabama plaguing us for years. And a, and and a quick years. side note: uh, how many players did? Alabama, didn't they lose like 18 of their starters? In the I transfer? knew it started out at like 11, it was... and it was, it's bad. They've lost pretty much half of their starting offense and half of their starting defense last time I checked. I'm sure the number's only gone up. Actually, the transfer portal, I believe, has over like 100 plus kids in it right now. Do you think this is because of NIL? Which we could talk all about NIL. Oh, like, uh, <laughs> that'd be a whole podcast in itself. But you got to think that's part of the reason these players oh, are moving big time i mean and look at uh um prime getting hired by colorado i think he's gonna flip that program around big time i think so too and well he was really good at it was jackson state yep. right jackson state he was really good they won their i don't know what what do you call it i don't know what their division is but they won they won their, their championship thing. right um, and it seems like he's a great leader. I mean, yeah, he really is. If I was an, if I was aspiring to be in the NFL, you have Nick Saban, Alabama, historical place to go. You know, basically get a free oh, yeah. draft into the NFL, and then you or you take a risk on Deion Sanders. I'd risk it, but it seems like they're the risking coach, it. Man. You know, I I've heard Nick Saban's tough, man. I like with culture or not, Nick Saban's tough. Like the Bill Belichick of oh, yeah. college football. Big time. And I'm I'm but, sure he's pissed on missing out this year. Oh, yeah. I'm, I think they've got a bowl game that doesn't matter, but, you know. But it doesn't matter because that bowl game, none of the bowl games that are not a part of the playoff matter. I have no idea what the spread is. I have no idea what, like, the differential is. So it's college this football. Is college it's football. always going it's, to be good. It's going to be good. It's going to be high scoring. You know this. Oh, yeah. I know this. So I'm going to go out there. I'm going to say Michigan wins this game 45 to 33. High scoring game. I College football games seem to always be like high scoring in these moments. Right. They do. Um, I know it's like a really big number, but uh, I don't. I, I, I feel it might be closer to like 60 combined rather than almost 80 combined. Probably. I don't, it's not, it's not horrible, but, uh, oh, that's fine. Okay. I've really liked watching a little bit of TCU I've seen this season, but I, I am going to stick with Big Blue. 
I, I like your spread. I'm going to lower it just a little bit. I think the over-under is going to be a little closer to 60-ish. So I really like 35-28 Michigan. A little lower scoring. You know, these, these two teams have really done well due to a little bit of their defense. But honestly, they've been really good. Defensively, I think Michigan gets a... A touchdown. I don't know whether they're going to be up by like 14 or whether they're going to get it last. I don't. I'm not going to get into the that kind of scenario. But I believe Michigan is going to take this by touchdown. What about the next bowl game we got, though? Well, more than a touchdown. I see. This is going to be interesting. We do have the Peach Bowl next with Ohio State versus Georgia. Georgia being the one and Ohio being the four. Um, man, after seeing Ohio State get obliterated by Michigan. I'm really curious it's, to what George is going to do to them. Whether they're going to drop like 60 or 70, honestly. Um, come on, you got to be a little conservative. Maybe more like 50, right? I, I think I, it sounds like we both have no faith in Ohio State to do much. You no, know, they they seem to squeak in the, as the four every once in a while, but they always get destroyed. And I know oh, maybe destroyed is a harsh term. Um, sorry, sorry, Ohio State fans. Um, I, I, th obviously, I'm taking Georgia. I'm just gonna say that off the bat. I, I think Georgia is going to. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of do what you did in the first one. I think Georgia's gonna drop at least 45. I think Ohio State might muster up 20. I, I, I really don't know what to say. I, I we should have looked at more college football in the season. <laughs> It's tough, like, when the Badgers... When I realized the Badgers were horrible, my interest in college football just sort of dropped off. Pretty much. Uh, same with UConn. I, I don't pay attention to, to football. Basketball, now you've got my attention. Football, no. Uh, just College football, while it's fun and interesting to watch, like, the bowl games here at the end, the regular season, just kind of boring here and there, I feel. The only game I thoroughly enjoyed was watching... Joe Burrow, just tear it up Pretty with much. LSU. That's about it. But I got to give my prediction. I went really high with 45 in Michigan. And I don't want to go like, I don't want to be like, oh, yeah. I mean, if Michigan can score 45, Georgia can score 60. Like, I can't do that. <laughs> it's just not going to happen. Um, give me Georgia, let's say 46 to 21. <laughs> Just, I'm literally going one point higher. <laughs> 46? That's such a weird number. I think it's too late. You know. said it. Write it down. It's too I late. said it. I said it. It's going in the notes. Two, two points. I want you to know, I don't know if we heard Alex's Ohio State score. Whether it's, a, it's completely irrelevant. He went 46-21. I am being outbid by two points. Is this Price is Right or something? It sounds like it. I'm ta I'm taking the over on your prediction. Sixty five. The over under is sixty five points. You're taking the over. I wow. guess so. Wow. I, I uh. Vegas has words for you, and they're calling. But uh, you know what? For, forget Vegas. Let's really talk about the college football playoff picture in the future. Um, what are your yes. thoughts on expanding it, Alex? Well, I what from what I've heard, they're expanding expanding to a twelve team playoff by the late at the latest twenty twenty six. It could be sooner, but I That's think a, they agreed by twenty twenty six they're going to definitely do it. That's a very drastic change. I feel. I, I just, don't I, know. Honestly, that's three times the size it is now. Yeah, but like, okay, guess... let's say it's twenty twenty six, right? And we have all these NIL deals, and it's, it already seems like players are going around wherever. So maybe the maybe. college football uh, atmosphere in general is a more competitive landscape. Because let's be honest, who really cares if Alabama can score 80 points against little old Wake Forest. Mississippi State or Wake Forest or some who knows who they are? Some team. like Division Seven school that shouldn't be playing Alabama. Right. Because it seems like Alabama just gets a whole bunch of those gimmies every year. Cakewalks, I would say. So I think this is a good thing. Assuming that... Oh, the, I'm not saying it's bad. It, I, I'm with you. I, I feel like 10 might be a little more conservative. Like two first round buys and then, you know. But I think 12 is a good... Like, like when you think of like... 
Now, what the way I think of it is like sort of the there's the four teams that get in, and then there's like the next like five to ten teams that you're like there's almost like a screwed over index of like dang this team was undefeated and they still didn't make the college football playoff, yeah. like that kind of thing. Like uh, uh, who was it a few years ago? Uh, Lincoln or not? Uh, Notre Dame. Yeah, undefeated all season, and everyone was like, "Oh my god!" What, they got two like, what five? Yeah, and it's like they didn't get in, and people are like, "This is why the four team playoff is ri- like terrible." Yep, because it doesn't reward teams that are, you know, and going maybe, undefeated. Maybe I'm not wrong with twelve team. I'm, I'm thinking of it now. You know, there's four, and then you have like four play-ins, like kind of like the four first four for like basketball season. That makes sense. I mm-hmm. guess I can see it working. So I mean. Overall, I think it's a good idea. Definitely. Expanding? Great. I'm just curious about by how much and how you want to do it. I, I think that's really the part they're stuck on. And uh, if they can stay stuck on it forever, the AP poll will do their best. But uh, I think I th- that wraps up college football. It does. So, Vic, is- would you like to segue into the next topic? I'd love to take the next step and let's elevate ourselves from college to NFL, Alex. Um, let's start with a Thursday night review. 49ers Seahawks. And Man, I kind of wish I would have watched a little bit of this game. It seems like it was a decent one. 49ers win it 21-13. to That defense carrying, and Brock Purdy out there cooking still. Looking great. Brock Purdy looks really good, and I think Jimmy, I think what we've seen is the end of Jimmy G, potentially, unless everyone or, else or gets hurt. Are we feeling kind of, like a, kind of like a Brady to Drew Bledsoe, Bledsoe? kind of comparison? <laughs> is that what we're saying? saying? You're saying that Jimmy G got Drew Bledsoed? I thought that's what I'm asking you. Like, I, I you're it saying feels like Jimmy it. G? I feel like Jimmy G still kind of got a job. I would feel. Or do you think? Well, because it I, depends. You remember, How Trey far... Lance is on that team too. I know he's on that team, but it, you're in a tough spot. If if Brock Purdy carries that Niners team, like let's say all the way to a Super Bowl. Sure. What do you do next season? How can you sit there as a Niners organization and be like, "Well, geez, Brock, you did a, you got us to a Super Bowl, but um, we we still have Jimmy Garoppolo. <laughs> like, how can you, you can't I, do that, or even to Trey Lance? Like, Trey Lance didn't look amazing. Oh, Trey Lance didn't look bad. I don't know, dude. And I'm really mad that that this has happened to him. It really sucks for him because he didn't really play. Uh, with Jimmy last season. Jimmy was pretty much there all season. I think right. Trey Lance had a couple games last season, maybe two. Yep. And, you know, he he's only plays two this season. He's out with a season-ending ankle injury. And it's and he looked pretty decent. That offense was flowing. And it's just it's sad to see him go down like that. And then, like, dude, it's hard. I think, uh, I, th- I believe Jimmy's at least a trade target for some teams. You know, I, honestly... And I know it's not that super likely. In the division, I could see 49ers trying to deal Jimmy G to the Seahawks if they don't pick up a quarterback in the first round. The really? Because are... Geno has been good, right? I mean... He has been good. They also have a top two pick from Denver this season. Um, oh. Or top yeah. five, I guess. Yeah. Because um, uh, I guess what Russell Wilson was worth that to tank for. Rough, oh uh, man, I, I, I hate trading first round picks for absolute trash. I hate to see that, but uh, I could see that happening. Yeah, uh, I think that's I think Jimmy G is definitely a trade target this off season, and I'd be interested to see where he goes. Honestly, again within division, if Matthew Stafford doesn't return, or if they don't have Baker Mayfield, I could see him going to the Rams. He could. But I just I, don't I know. highly doubt he'll stay in division. Um, yeah, and I don't know if they have the money to cut him but uh i could see him at least signing in division if he if he is able to be cut if if they are able to eat that cap yes yes anyway we both got it right um we both kind of over predicted and kind of overestimated the 49ers a little bit and kind of underestimated that defense that defense held him to 13 i had 25 21 niners you had 28 17 niners yeah we're pretty close but i think Moving on to our Thursday night football preview, we have the Jaguars versus Jets. And as Mike Tomlin would say, we do not care. I care a little bit. 
that's more for the Patriots playoff chances. But uh, I, I, I'm taking the Jaguars. <clears throat> they look great. They beat the Cowboys. Woo-hoo. Let's move into our next segment. All right, moving on. <laughs> that was our Thursday Night Football preview, everyone. Moving on, we're going to go to our 530 Great Games of the Week review, reviewing last week's 530 Great Games. The first one, Dolphins-Bills, big AFC East Divisional game. Great game. Bills squeak out the win here, 32-29. to 29. Uh, My prediction, 25-20 Bills. Your prediction, 24-17 Bills. So we got, we got it right, but Dolphins put up a little more of a fight than we were expecting. They did. They did not care about the weather. Big factor there at the end. Um, hate seeing snowballs from fall from the sky, Alex. Um, only Bills fans. Only Bills fans, man. Um, but uh, big two-point conversion of Josh Allen there near the end, actual. Um, I hated seeing him jump for that and then fumble the ball and then everyone chasing after it, but him just standing there going, I got it. I got it. I'm like, what are you doing? If you lose me fantasy points, I swear to God. And then they rule it good. And I was, oh, man, that was a, that was a panic attack. But, uh, right. yeah, got it right. That's all that matters. You know, you just stand there and say you got it, you'll get it. It's fine. Yeah, um, I mean, it's a good thing they didn't do something like throw a lateral away to another player that ran it out for a walk-off touchdown. Andre Stevenson should have gone down, and I will stand by that. I didn't watch that game, and I don't want to talk about it. You just you go down, you take overtime, and you just you go and win the coin toss. It only takes 13 seconds. So does Jacoby Myers have a job <laughs> next season? <laughs> At McDonald's, maybe? Uh, I think Dunkin' Donuts might be a more realistic option for him. Dunkin' but, Donuts. Uh, I'd be curious to see if the refs have a job after the Giants-Commanders game, Alex. A oh lot of my controversy gosh. coming out of this one. Oh, Lots of controversy. Yep. Um, the memes were just... I didn't watch the game, but the memes told me everything I needed to I know. I saw the both plays, and both plays should have had flags. Like, I, like I'm talking, like, roughing the passer, baby, bad. Like, they should have had flags. I don't give a shit. I, um, Giants commanders, Giants win 20 to 12. Um, you, you, you're getting closer to me here in these predictions because you had the Giants at least. But, uh, man, uh, this was really close. I really thought that last second touchdown was going to get a flag. Uh, I, I don't know if we can legally show the clips. I don't think we can because NFL copyright laws. But, uh, holy heck. That was that was PI to another level. Like honestly, you know how bad it was, Alex. It was that Ram Saints playoff game should have had a flag bad. I was gonna say like I, I, my thought was like this is almost as bad as the uh, the Saints not getting in the playoff or getting bounced out of the playoffs from that dumb pass interference. Yep, this is this is that level of bad I felt. Um, and actually, you know, it's crazy if they do get that last second touchdown. It, it does come down to a two point conversion. Like, and it is what it is. But, like, I think we could have gotten that two-point conversion because of I think these two teams, and I, I think this is fair to say, are some of the two most evenly matched teams in the league, Alex. I think that's fair to say. Literally. I mean, they tied each other. Like, yep. And I, how I much quite even does it get? And if, if that touchdown and two-point conversion goes through, I think there's a chance for a secondary tie, honestly. And the Giants, the Commanders looked great in the second half. They did not have a great first half, which I think kind of hurt them outside of those penalties that should have been, that weren't. It looks like uh, looks like the Commanders didn't get their early Christmas present. You hate to see it. But uh, you know who does get some Christmas presents? And no matter how bad they are, we're at least getting three decent Christmas Day games, Alex. Oh, and, uh, we'll go settle in, down. We'll settle go down. in order of, ra- of lowest to highest rating. All right. Um, yeah, we'll start with this first one. That'll be kind of an indication. Um, the Broncos versus the Rams. Both teams are eliminated for the playoffs. Um, Rams are a one-point favorite, Alex. Um, oh, we boy. have a whole whopping two quality, one importance, and somehow that makes it a two overall. In the famous TikTok sound, um, <laughs> this is a joke, right? <laughs> right. We can't flex this for anything. Can like, we make for, this a Saturday game at least? Like, why? You know, I understand. Like, the Rams, defending Super Bowl champion. What better, you know, way to have the Rams, your Super Bowl defending champions, play it out on Christmas against the Broncos, who are a team that have 
all this promise and now we're here at christmas and these teams are both terrible yep, so both honestly ridden by injuries um you know are we even gonna give a rating for this game or like review is it even worth it i feel like we can just talk about why these teams are so bad really quick and then um okay. we'll just move on to the next important game because actually, I probably actually its importance has probably gone off after this weekend, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, really quickly, uh, Baker Mayfield has looked semi decent at quarterback. I, uh, I know we got named this last week starter against the uh, pa- Packers. Packers. Um, yep. How's that game going? It was ten to three last time I checked. Packers are up right now. I think the third quarter just ended. Packers are winning twenty four to twelve. Other news, um, Alex, do you want to talk about our next game? Yeah, let's move on. Honestly, give me give me the Rams and moving on. <clears throat> give me the Rams. All right, yeah, me too. Next game. This one's actually a little more important. Well, kind of. I'll explain why. It's the Buccaneers taking on the Cardinals. Buccaneers are a two and a half point favorite. The quality of this game is a whopping 14, importance 27, and overall 21. And my guess is that Wait, no, this isn't even a 5.30 great. This is literally just on the schedule. That's why it's so bad. But the only reason there's any slight importance to this game is the Buccaneers at 6-8, and eight, mind you, are leading the amazing NFC South and, and are honestly, probably going to get a playoff spot. They wouldn't be having this bad of a problem and having this... Actually, I bet you the importance has gone up. I don't care to check it. But after blowing that lead to the Cardinals... I'm uh, sorry, uh, Bengals, my bad... C's and Cincinnati and Cardinals and just I, I can't read anything right apparently <clears throat> but uh after blowing that lead to Cincinnati uh it is way more important to the Buccaneers to win this game than to drop it to the Cardinals who will still be quarterbacked by Colt McCoy I believe unless they've moved on at this point um so I bet you that spread has changed a little bit maybe we'll see um tough game last time for the Cardinals I believe against the Broncos and they kick the whopping three field goals. Um, I feel the Buccaneers' defense might be a little bit harder and uh, a little bit more, uh, I don't know how to say, uh, looking for a desperate domination game. And I think this is the perfect time to show a flash of what they're supposed to be against somebody that is meager and won't make the playoffs and, you know, will give their fan base hope for absolutely zero reason. And with that, Alex, um, I'd like to move on to your prediction first, because I'm really curious what you think. Well, I think Buccaneers, I want to say they're going to, like, dominate this game. And they really, there's no reason why they shouldn't blow out the Cardinals. Cardinals don't have Colt McCoy, or they don't have Kyler Murray, They and Psycho Tom will probably come out after getting embarrassed the way they did. Give me, and I don't think this will be, like, super high scoring, because Buccaneers' offense has not looked stellar oh their red zone has been horrible this year so i think this will be a pretty puketastic low scoring affair give me the buccaneers 21 to the cardinals 12 and that is four field goals in case you wanted me to do the math for you oh i i don't hate it uh i'm gonna go i i was actually debating on whether i wanted to give the cardinals more or less than 10 points I know I can't give them 10 points because that means they get a touchdown somehow, and I, that's not happening. So I'm just trying to decide whether I want to give them four field goals or three, and I think I'm going to go ahead and give them four. But I don't think the Buccaneers get in the end zone three times. I think they'll oh get in there God. two and kick two field goals. So give me the Buccaneers 20 to 12. I think that's right. fair. Definitely fair. And I I wouldn't watch this game. No, a game I will watch, though, after Christmas dinner Um Packers Dolphins because this one is the best on the schedule, Alex. This is the best Christmas gift the NFL could give us because apparently putting any better teams on Christmas Day is a sin. But uh, the Packers fighting for their playoff spots here, um, and the Dolphins fighting to keep theirs as well. I, I'm surprised this isn't higher rated because they're both teams that have big aspirations. Both teams of are cl- really of fighting a wild card, man. Um, yeah, well, Dolphins are, can't win their division anymore. I think Bills have pretty much snatched um, that from actually, their souls. If the Bills really. lose out, I don't think, which they probably won't. They've got uh, oh, they've got the Bears this week, um, Cincinnati uh, the week after, and then New England to end the season. 
I don't, I don't think they're going to lose out. But if they've clinched the one seed, maybe they lose that New England game. Um, you know, I was doing a little 538 playing, and uh, we'll talk about 538 here for just a second before we get into our predictions here, just because I want to stall. Um, you can actually go on to 538 and uh, predict the playoffs or predict wins and losses and calculate your team's chance. A little shout out to them, maybe get them a little cyber traffic. We'll see. Um, if you if you want to calculate if your team still has a real chance, and man, no matter how hypothetical it may be, it's just nice to see they can still make it. It gives you some sense of hope. Yep. False hope, maybe. Real hope, for some of you that have a lot of blues in your box, yes. And you'll see what I mean if you check out the website. But uh, anyway, back to this game. And actually, Alex, nice as the four-point spread is for the Dolphins, this game is in Miami. And I just, you know, sometimes Aaron Rodgers pulls crazy games out of nowhere. And I know this is crazy to say. And as somebody who is not the biggest Packers fan, I'm going to go with the Packers this game. Crazy right. enough. Um, I think it will be very similar to some of the Christmas games here. I think it might be a little more defensive, but after, you know, watching what the Dolphins did to the Bills and letting up 32 points, I think maybe there's a slight chance Aaron Rodgers can do something to this defense. As crazy as that is to say. And actually, and I... I know I just said it was going to be low scoring, but you know what? Screw it. Both these defenses have been kind of mad this season. They're, the floodgates are going to open, maybe. Not that high scoring, but, you know, I, I feel like I'm just going to stop talking and give you a score. Give me the Packers me number. 28 to 20. Oh, my God. And this may or may not be because I need the Dolphins to lose this game so the Patriots still have an actual chance. Because this is literally the only way they make it, is if the Dolphins drop, like, two of three. So you have ulterior motives. A little bit. Yeah. But, you know, I, 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 after watching the Bills do it, why can't the Packers do it? The Dolphins' defense has looked really bad here at the back end of the season after having that great start. You know what, Vic? As much as I want to pick the Packers, I I can't do it. I just I really I thought maybe you'd team. follow me on this one. I can't follow it. You can, what's the saying? You can lead a horse to water, but you can't, can't horse it to, drink. yep. Man, the Packers defense is so freaking bad. I can't see how they'd have an answer for Tyreek Hill in Miami, coming off of a bad, you know, well, not bad loss no, to the Bills, but no, I already had a lot of decent game. I know the Packers will probably put Jair on Tyreek, or they'll be well, dumb and not. halfway decent. Yeah, but I maybe they, maybe they put him on Waddle. Maybe. I, I just don't believe in the Packers anymore. They're... Hey, man. Whether it's false hope or real hope, I'm telling you, take a chance, maybe. Follow no, me. I'm taking Follow the me. Dolphins. No. Follow me into the light. Come on. <laughs> no, I'm not drinking that water. When the Packers win this game, you're going to be so sad you didn't follow. I, like, I actually like the four-point spread, but I just know Packers are going to find a way to like choke away this game. Give me the Dolphins. Honestly, give me the Dolphins 32-21. to 21. I, that's how much I don't believe in the Packers. And it, it makes me sad. And for someone that should be a homebody, you just absolutely dropped them, huh? That I bad. recognize I recognize poor team play when what I see What about the it. run the whole table, Alex? What about that, you know, run the table? Don't you remember that? The whole relax thing from like yeah, a few... Yeah, on. but that was when they were still good and had good receivers and didn't Christian suck. Watson looks great! He AJ does. Dillon and Aaron Jones, I can't believe I forgot his name for half a second, uh, have been a great running back duo. The Packers I don't think you sucks. believe in the power of this team, Alex, which does bring us to our power rankings for this week, Alex. And guess who we don't have to talk about? I'm so, so glad they're not here. And I, they did I, it to themselves. They, they did. did it to themselves. I will spoil it. The Cowboys are not on this list, ladies and gentlemen. Honestly, I have them at seven. I would like to give an honorable mention at number six to the Vikings for having the largest comeback in the regular season. They don't make the list. Anyway, into our actual power rankings and the five teams that do matter. Um, number five, Alex, we're just gonna hop right into it. Give me the 49ers. Um, Brock Purdy has been an awesome steal in the draft. Uh, I think if you look at anybody doing well, redrafts of this season, Brock Purdy goes higher after him looking this awesome. Um, they have clinched a playoff berth with their third quarterback of the season. Uh, that defense is still carrying, but you know what? 
I think they're going to do great. I'd love to see them against a playoff team, which they uh, don't really have against the, the end of the season here. Not really. Uh, they got kind of a nice cakewalk to end the season, Alex, with Washington, Las Vegas, and Arizona as their last three games. This may be where we disagree on some things here, but at number four, I have the Chiefs, Alex. Um, I felt it was disrespectful to not put them on this list. I felt it was a little disrespectful to put them at five. So I gave them number four, even though they went to overtime versus the Texans. I felt like they should have dropped lower, but I couldn't leave them off the list. And I couldn't just put them at five. Is that fair? No, that, that's fair. And okay. the Texans always seem to play well against bad or well against good teams. They really do. Some and random just reason. Down and then... When it matters most, really. Got to top on our, our number three seed here, Alex. I've got the Bengals. Boo day, Ooh. baby. Um, their defense has looked great this season. Um, sh they shut out, and I'm gonna go a little skip Bayless on you here. <clears throat> Thomas Edward Patrick Brady Jr. in the third quarter. <laughs> Absolutely shut him out and make him blow a lead. Crazy. This team is definitely a Super Bowl contender, and they have a little bit harder at the end of the season, but I, I believe they're a playoff lock now. Um, I, I don't see them making anything less than a seven, anything less than a division winner. Depending on how the season goes, uh, that Baltimore Bengal game, I know we've talked about it uh, for the last couple weeks now, will, I believe, decide the division unless Baltimore drops another one here. And then it's, I believe, it's mathematically impossible for them to win the division. And then uh, I've mentioned them a little bit here. At number two, Alex, I have the Bills. I wanted to put them at number one. I really, really did. Um, but they've been having a lot of close games. They lost, they, oh, sorry, won. Uh, the last one is what I meant is to the against the Dolphins here against the last second field goal, and man, that game was back and forth. I watched that game and it was crazy. Um, and they they beat the Jets barely, and it's been it's been close running for them, but they've, they've gotten the job done. Can't deny them that. Um, you know, hopefully maybe they've got the one seed locked up in the next two weeks. Maybe Kansas City drops the game randomly to like Denver or Las Vegas, unfortunately. And then, you know, maybe the Bills don't got to try. And maybe New England can uh, get their stuff together and win week 18. Um, so get, get to the part where I can start flapping. Uh, okay, sorry. And then the Bills end of the season is Chicago, Cincinnati, New England. Uh, <clears throat> but the Eagles, man, number one, start flapping your wings. I'm going to flap with you here. Fly, Eagles, fly. Um, I, I hate to say it, though. I believe they lost Jalen Hurts for the rest of the regular season. Uh, Probably. Uh, they've mentioned a lot of him carrying the team, Alex. Uh, Jalen, him, her. That's not right. It's That's not his name. Jalen Hurts? Yeah. Okay, okay. I thought Jaylen that was crazy. Hurts. Like, it just, cause I, I, wrote, I wrote it down as Jalen, him, Hurts, and that just looks wrong <laughs> in my head. But no. What are your pronouns? Him, Hurts. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Jalen, quote unquote, him, Hurts, steps up, carry the team, literally. Uh, scored all of the points outside of a field goal in the first quarter. And, uh, you know, they looked a little shaky against the Bears there for a second, but man, big, big second half out of Jalen, and he's looked great all season. Definitely MVP candidate. I Honestly, I could definitely see him winning it. There should be no reason for him not to, but uh, they've pretty much locked up the division now, um, and the number one seed. I, they honestly can't really lose it without like losing out and even then i don't know who can steal it from them the, the cowboys really can't steal the um division after that horrible horrible loss to the jags who honestly might have made this list if they didn't suck half the season uh, and could possibly still steal the division from the tennessee titans um but uh, a solid win against da dallas next week uh i don't know if it's on Christmas or like the day after or something, but uh, Dallas Eagles is going to be a good game. And then they've got Dallas, New Orleans, and the New York Giants set in the season, Alex. It's going to be a good one. Definitely is. Well, I, I think your list is great. And I'm going to talk about something else that's great. Oh, yeah? Yeah, moving on to our gaming section. We're going to talk about some kind of game of the year not drama, but just uh, a retrospective, I suppose. Okay. So Elden Ring won Game of the Year, yeah. but Metacritic, um, I would say, which is a little more reliable than like IGN, uh, turns out that Elden Ring was not the top rated game on Metacritic this year. Really? Turns out Witcher 3 Wild Hunt with the next gen update 
I don't want to call it a remaster, but it was kind of a polished yeah, version. Yeah. Got a 97 out of 100 rating on wow. Metacritic. How much stock do you think these people put into like Metacritic reviews or IGN reviews? Um, well, I feel like Metacritic is right there behind IGN. I just feel like IGN's more established and has been around longer that people just trust it more, I feel. I, I just feel like a lot of games get overrated. Definitely it, are. It, it leans too much to the, the positive side of things. And I think a lot of games tend to get inflation. This is inflation. This is inflation. Game rating inflation. Um, it'd be it'd be nice to see Metacritic get more stock put into it. I think that's fair. Um, I I don't use it that often, but uh, you know, every once in a while I pop over there. It's definitely not useless when it comes to gaming, but uh, I'd like to see more out of it. I think that's fair. Pretty maybe, controlling. Um, maybe not controlling, but uh, not as controlling as the government's trying to be. Alex, uh, apparently the government has a group of seven lawmakers that sent a letter to a couple of the biggest video game companies and are asking them what steps they're trying to take, uh, I guess taking or trying to take to combat harassment and extremism in online video games. Uh, the list includes Activision Blizzard, Sony, Roblox, uh, Take-Two Interactive, Riot Games, Epic, and of course EA. And, you know, some of these games are pretty good when it comes to, you know, whether it's, you know, chat features or, or voice chat features. They're they're normally pretty decent at catching stuff. I would think so, but, like, I, I don't know, like Call of Duty cares. is literally a game about shooting people with guns. Like, well, what do you do to combat? I don't know. And I feel like this is kind of out of pocket the government I, I don't know why they would care i know the internet is becoming increasingly you know dangerous i guess is the correct word you know there's a lot of outreaches um you know I, you gotta be careful you go i mean i'm sure i i'm i wouldn't be surprised if they start getting into you know and i'm not sure how well that would really go but you know social media i mean look at reddit honestly i i would guess what might be a big kind of outreach in that way the thing about reddit is it's such a communal place yeah and people it's... would lose their minds if the government tried to like puppeteer reddit because reddit's sort of a anonymous safe space for people you would think but uh... so back to this topic about the government yeah. uh one thing that's interesting is uh from this article that i read about it one of the other companies that was on this list was Inner Sloth. Do you know who Inner Sloth is? Um, aren't they the Among Us creators? Yes, and do you know how big that group is? Uh, I know they had to expand, but aren't they? They're maybe like 20 strong now, huh? Yep, about 20. So they clearly didn't look at like necessarily oh. just the biggest. They looked at most popular, and somehow Inner Sloth ended up on their list, which well, I think is uh, pretty Among funny. Us has really definitely launched them. And uh, it has, and it's been a great staple in the gaming community, honestly. Um, you look at VR Among Us, they just added a new mode at the Game Awards. They announced there's a, there's a lot Intersoth has done last year, and I'm I don't, I'm not surprised they make the list. I, I kind of want to play know some how Among Us, relevant they'll be in the next you know five to ten years, but you know, they're not gonna think. be like Minecraft where like people are still probably playing it ten years from now, but oh, yeah, I still have fun with it. That's fair. But uh, I, I feel this is a little out of left field, and uh, I, I don't expect anything to come of this. To, oh, maybe we can talk on more of a happy topic, Alex, and get back to our Christmas theme of the episode. What do you think? I think we should. And a question I want to lob up here for you is: What are some of your favorite Christmas slash winter in-game events that you played in? You know, it can be from any game you've ever played in. Just some limited time event, whatever. Yeah, man, it is hard to choose. There have been some pretty good ones. And honestly, I, I am going to go with two big ones here. And, and in no particular order, Fortnite's Winterfest has been really good. You know, all those free cosmetics they hand out. Normally some of them pretty good. I don't know how good this year's Winterfest is, but uh, I know there was... Kind of like a star wars collab at one point you know you got like the millennium falcon for free as a glider that was kind of cool and and those come out because always fortnite has been decent at them and especially the free ones 
aren't that lackluster, honestly. They're usually pretty decent. Um, the next good one, I'm, I'm not sure if it's a really good one, and maybe you'll disagree with me here. Apex's kind of winter event, the uh, the train. I, that wasn't too, too bad. Yeah, it, that was actually... So, my answer was going to be the train, and I think okay. that was, like, season four or five? Somewhere around there. I think that's Actually, right. it might have been only season three. Yeah, and then they, like, when tried did... to bring it back and absolutely ruined it the other year. Oh, and my gosh. people were annoyed. Yeah, but I really liked the first iteration of that with the holiday train. Um, and I also enjoyed playing, like, whenever Rocket League would have their winter events. Like, um, that's right. Um, they, they, well, they'd give out a bunch of free. Yes. Imagine that free cosmetics in yep. 2022. The, Crazy. Gold, the golden gifts. Yep. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. Those are always good. I golden definitely gifts. a game that we've put down due to COD platform issue. Oh, okay. COD. Yeah. And platform issues and connecting. I'm, we haven't I, even tried playing in a oh, months, my, man. Well, I bet we're not even months. champion rank anymore, man. Yeah. We're, we're pretty, uh, pretty, pretty much duds the game yeah right right exactly speaking of studs and duds let's get to our final segment of the podcast here where we break down our stud and dud for the week a lot of good options this week i think great options i i really hope we didn't choose the same ones i hope we didn't and i don't think we did because my stud is gonna have to be Lionel messi winning the world cup with argentina I love it when you care about another sport more than I do. I figured that was a safe one because I don't think you really paid attention to soccer. So and the I good was thing asleep is, in the game. I'm not going to lie. I woke up and I was like, damn, it's three to three and they're going into penalty kicks. That's cool. And then put my phone back down. Well, and the good thing in, is that like a lot of Americans are bandwagon Messi or Ronaldo fans. So when Messi wins, America wins. So I big dud. So. Or not big dud. Big, big stud. stud. Big stud there. You know who didn't go out on top when he should have? Aldo. I don't know. No. Tom oh. Brady. Oh, okay. Thank God. He's my dud. Tom Brady is my dud. You really blew that lead to the Bengals. And you really had Eli Apple saying the future is now, old man. Come on, Tom. Really? You should have gone out. You left. You left Bill Belichick. You wanted to prove him wrong. You win that Super Bowl and then you ride off into the sunset with your three hundred some million dollar broadcast deal. Really, sure. that's what he should have done. We were not far off on our duds. Okay, you took one blowout or blown comeback, I should say, and I took the other. I think you know where I'm going with this. I have chosen, and I put this blame more on the Colts than Matt Ryan. I kind of got the Matt Ryan and Colts here. I, I kind of took a two for one deal there. Um, I, Jeff Saturday was a horrible decision. I I feel like Frank Wright might have been better. I don't know. I, I Frank Wright has not done I guess terribly well, but I think he's better than Jeff Saturday. I think that's probably fair to say. probably better than an ESPN analyst, right? Definitely. Um, biggest blown lead ever. Um, Matt Ryan is now owner of the regular and postseason biggest comebacks, and they're both against him, Tom Brady in the Super Bowl, and Kirk Cousins in the regular season. Who would have thought? Matt Ryan has fell off. He has not done well. And honestly, bold prediction here, I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't play after this season and kind of goes out kind of like Phillip Rivers did. Kind of a sad goodbye. It really, Thanks. really is. But the only thing that makes it better, Alex, is my stud for the week. We talked about him earlier. It's him. Jalen Hurts, man. Team One, on his back. Team on his back. You know, passing the ball, not a bad day. 22 of 37 for 315 yards, two interceptions. You know, not, not great there. But 17 rushes, 61 yards a hat trick in the touchdown department, and a two-point conversion, baby. He is him. And honestly, if he is not the MVP of the season, uh, it's probably Patrick Mahomes. But outside of those two, okay, maybe Joe Burrow. Those are my top three. But I, I believe Jalen Him Hurts deserves it. 
man, you've seen him carry this team. It is it is his team. He has been the difference maker there. It's not just a good team around him. It is He's elevated his play, and he is him. He is him indeed. And on that note, I think it's time for us to end. We've had a great podcast here. We'd love to wish you all a Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays. Um, we'll see you in January, guys. Thank you for watching the podcast. Thank you for being here. Every little bit counts. Make sure you like, subscribe, and ring the bell to get notifications when the video goes live. Put some love in the comments. Let us know your favorite stuff about Christmas, whether it be movies or music or food. Let us know about the biggest disappointments or crybabies in the NBA. Just remember to use hashtag quick chats and we will talk about them each and every week. Thank you guys, and we'll see you next year on the Griefer Hour.